run away from your feelings, babe. Don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, don't hesitate to say, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe, hey, babe. Turn around every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you never come around. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of listening to the sound of my tears. Hey, babe. Every now and then I get a little bit nervous that the best of all the years have gone by. Hey, babe. Every now and then I get a little bit terrified. I see the fucking look in your eyes. Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Every now and then I hey, babe. Every now and then I fall hey, babe, apart, and, and I need, need you more tonight. I fucking need you more than ever. One of the greatest movies of all time, a friend of yours. Yeah, that rendition. I mean, after that, everyone like you know. But that when I first heard that in that movie, and he threw the fucking in, and I wasn't ready for it. You, I sh my pants. You ever seen that movie too? <laughs> I, I, I was dying laughing. And then if you look closely at the in the background, Will Ferrell's wedding face photo. <laughs> have you ever seen that? It's, he's like this, <laughs> like in the wedding photo, like that they have up. He's dude. It's it is um. I think that we were we were just talking about this that. Old school, all those movies. And Dan Band is, shout out to Dan Finnerty and the Dan Band. Uh, they were in all of them. He, he, he's in New York. You ever want, if you want to come on, Dan Finnerty lives in New York. He's a great guest. Yeah. Be great. Let's have him on. Let's have Dan. Why don't we have Dan Finnerty on? Yeah, let's have him on. All right. I'll, I'll talk to Danny Finn Finn. Danny Finn Finn. He's at Sony Music Hall this weekend. Whoa, I saw this that weekend. Actually. actually, I'm going to Sony Music Hall uh, for a charity event on the. Someday next week. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. April 16th. Is it a Tuesday? That's when I'll be there. It is. I yeah. saw that whole that venue is really nice. Sony Hall. Yeah, I went and watched Jessica Keith? Kirsten oh. do her special there. She crushed it. It was beautiful. Yeah. I got another great venue for you. I went yesterday. So I'm at a point now as a parent where my daughter is eight, almost nine. So she's starting to like Eight me. is enough. True. True. She's starting to like Did you even get that reference? I love you so much. Eight is enough was a big, big, big show in the seventies. What is eight is enough? Eight is enough. Uh, was that Bonaduce? Eight is enough. You never heard of it? Eight is enough. No, it was like the most. It was like the Brady Bunch, basically. Eight is enough. They had eight children. Eight was enough. I don't know. Eight is enough. Does, do, does Stevie See? Trevor Karate? Is that Bonaduce? Is that where Bonaduce is from? Yeah, it is Bonaduce. You know Danny Bonaduce. You know Danny Bonaduce. Danny Bonaduce, I know. That was where he made his bones. Eight is enough. Originally, yeah. Okay. Well, shout him, shout it out. All right. And yeah. um, yeah. So she's she's eight is enough, going to be nine. Yeah. And she loves music, right? And she has loves this one musician, Benson Boone. Okay. Shout out Benson Boone. I'm a boonie. Shout out Benson Boone. I hear his music 24-7, 365, right? Like, can't, like, I can't explain to you how, like, she's obsessed with him. Benson Boone is her 1975. Wow. I love the 1975. Now, is he a, is he a, a singer for adults or yeah. is he a kid singer? No, he's a singer for adults. He's 21 years old. You've heard some of his songs. And, and, and he is, um, first of all, it's wow. born after, born 2000. I was going to say, it's, a, it's a wild thing when you meet someone. And you and you like and you're like this kid was born in 2002. Benny Benny um, Boons. Yeah. So um so anyway, you know, she had mentioned that she wanted to go to this concert Tick and that. and we were like, you know, I don't know, like whatever, whatever. And then I get the tickets, right? Mm -hmm. And then I we you know, we don't even tell her we're going. We just say, you know, she got <gasps> she she did a good job on her math test. Where are these tickets? Where's the show? So the, ah. I'm getting No, so so the venue, which I'll get to, was called is it's a brand new venue. It's called the Brooklyn Paramount. It's inside LIU Brooklyn's old basketball court. It is one of the most beautiful venues I've ever seen in What's my it life. Called? The Brooklyn Paramount. The Brooklyn Paramount. We're gonna they're gonna start to do comedy. Capacity? There. I was gonna say. Uh standing for musicians gotta be four or five thousand, but okay. comedy two thousand. You okay. could do two thousand or eighteen hundred seated or or maybe I don't or maybe fifteen. I don't know, but it's it's good enough. Like, good, good, like yeah. it, it, it is definitely going to be a venue that that comedians do but so we go you know in the middle of the you know we're, we're taking a, a cab there and jazz is like she had made a benson boone shirt like a homemade but she shirt. doesn't know but delilah doesn't know delilah she just, just thinks, happens to be wearing the benson boone homemade no no no, shirt. no no delilah doesn't know 
Jasmine has the Benson Boone shirt in her in in her purse. Oh, Jasmine made a Benson Boone Jas- shirt. Jasmine made a Benson Boone shirt. Delilah, me, Delilah, and Jasmine, we had told Delilah that we were going to just take her out to dinner for doing so well on her math test. So then she's like, you know, like, where are we going to dinner, daddy? Like, whatever. We're like, That's oh, a you'll... red flag for me if I was a kid. Yeah. Dinner just for being good on one test, not a semester. Yeah. She had to do something was up. She knew Continue. something was up. She kept saying. <laughs> she kept saying. And I was saying, I was saying, Jazz, you see, I'm not a good liar. And so she, so she was saying, so she was saying, ja, Delilah, she was like, just let us in. You know, let, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? And then D- Jazz texted me. She was like, do you, should we just tell her? And I was like, yeah, tell her. So she goes, all right, close your eyes. And then Delilah closed her eyes and then she opens it up and she has the Benson Boone sweatshirt and Delilah, like to see an excitement on your child's face that I've never seen before where she started to cry. She like oh. couldn't, it wasn't fake. It was yeah. all organically real. Ooh, wow. And then she hugged the both of us and oh. I was like, I'm literally going to jump out of the car and kill yeah. myself. Like I, I can't, can't like top it. I can't top it. Can't like, process it. Can't process it. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. And, and to see her, like I'll show you the pictures to see when we then on top of that going to the concert where she was like ama- like so thankful whatever we take her down a hallway and she doesn't know what she thinks we're going to the seats Don't and we me. go into his into meet the, and greet into Boone's lair into Boone's lair we entered the boom here comes the boom <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I literally boom boom, boom. Oh, let me hear say Benson Benson <laughs> so we walk in. And she is literally like almost like she said she couldn't feel her legs. Like he's the Beatles. Like literally the Beatles. And she, he was the nicest kid. Like she said. Did to, he know you, of you? So I had, you? I had messaged him. I had DM'd him. And he said to me, he was like, oh. You I, slid in there? I slid in there. And he responded. And Well, he did not respond. Uh, DM, he said, oh, I was going to get to you to respond to you. But, I, you know, I haven't had the time yet. I was like, it's all good. It's all good, you know. You know. Oh, oh, so you, <laughs> yeah. So you DM them, but he didn't respond. You got there a different way. I well, no. So I got the tickets through. <laughs> he acknowledged he saw the DM. He acknowledged he saw the DM, and he said he meant to respond, but he just didn't. <laughs> I've been there, and I was like, "That's fair." And so, no, I got the tickets through Live Nation. Shout out the great people at Live Nation, Stacy. Great, you were like it's amazing. And so, I, I got the I I got the tickets, and then we got the meet and greet. They hooked up the meet and greet. Did she and know where she was going when you were walking down the hall? She, no, she, she didn't really sit together. No, she didn't because she had never really been to like anything like this, so she didn't know. I was like, you don't really ask this meet and greet. Come on, right, right, right. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's security everywhere. <laughs> and then no, and then she like you know was like just so enamored by him, by Benson Boone, like she couldn't even. Kid got talent. Kid got talent. Okay. And then and then she. She said, I mean, this guy is, you know, 3 million followers on social media. I mean, sell, he sold out his tour in an hour, like in an hour, like the kid just sold out, okay. whatever. And she was like, uh, you know, talking to him and he was talking to us. And she was like, you know, mom, Jasmine was like, you know, she has stage fright. She wants to sing one of your songs for a talent show. And he was like, just do it. Like, you know, like, just like, uh, uh, he ripped off Nike's slogan. When yeah. He, he said, just do okay, it. Okay. And then, and, and was so nice. And, um, and then she said to him, the last thing she said, she was like, she was like, I love, she was like, thank you, Benson. She was like, but you're not more famous than my dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take that Benson. And I was like, <laughs> you'll get back to him. And I was like, Benson, you are, <laughs> you, you are five times as, as, as big as I'll probably ever be. Um, she said that? I, yeah. And, and, I, and, and <laughs> that's I was, great. She just had to leave him with a neg. Just yeah. loyalty. Like a dish. <laughs> and what I love about that is my daughter just has loyal, even if it, you know, didn't come out right. Just loyalty to the family. And she wants justice. What I love about my daughter, <laughs> what I'm seeing is she, this girl fights for justice. Benson Boone said, yeah. you know, they gave us a nice little private like area, but we were like in the crowd, but like on like a little elevated kind of like balcony in the back. Benson Boone said on one of his songs that he was like, guys, I know like we're all recording here and the lights, I get it. He was like, but just for this song, everyone put their phones away. You can, the next song, have your phones out, whatever. But this song, I want to connect with you. I yeah. want to just, you know, connect with you. I want I, this. I feel like I know where you're going. And then, a couple of people in front of us had their phones up and while like right be like it was silent like you know because he was about to start the song <laughs> so i goes put 
the phones away. <laughs> and then the one girl didn't even turn around. She just slowly, she just slowly lowered it. And we were like, Delilah, that can't. She's like, she's not listening to Benson Boone. And I was like, I, this girl fights oh, for justice God. at every turn. And literally is... <laughs> It's it's it like an adult. She goes, put, put the phone phones back. away. <laughs> like a school teacher. Like a school teacher. Oh, shit. And, and it was <laughs> and it was like, you know, she's it's it's just great to like sometimes like, you know, I remember we went to this hotel, right? And this hotel in in Dana Point, I think it was called Monarch Bay. I had stayed there once, right? Me and Jazz stayed there and the family. And we had a great meal there, but it's one of these hotels that's like down by the beach. You can't eat at that restaurant unless you're a guest at the hotel. Okay. That's just what it is. But I was like, you know what? How would they know? We had stayed there a month ago. We're back a month later. This I'm not is a where? Monarch Bay, Dana Point, California. In California. So I had just, we took like, you take like a little trolley. Oh, so you saw Boone in California. No, 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 no. This, this is a separate, separate story. story. This it. is a separate Got story. It. So. I'm just saying, because my daughter always wants justice. She, so we, we go to this restaurant and then the lady says, the waitress says, what's your room number? And I just said the room number from last, from the like previous month sure, or whatever. You know, like, and then, and then, so she writes it down and then my daughter goes, That's but the- we're actually not staying here. <laughs> oh my God. And then the, the waitress goes, the waitress goes, <laughs> well, you have to be staying here to eat at this restaurant. And I said, I said, yeah, we're actually, we're, we're going to make a hotel reservation after this. And Delilah goes, no, we're not. My dad, we just wanted to come to the restaurant. And she was like, I'm, I mean, they already gave us water. We had actually put an so appetizer what, order. I mean, they kicked you out. They kicked us out. They, they were like, wow. kicked us out. And then Delilah, and then Delilah had a bread, had a, you know, um, like a bread that she was like, almost going to like eat. Whatever. And I said, Delilah, you got to put the bread down. We got, we got kicked out. <laughs> and then she was like, but I already licked this. And I said, no, you, d- I didn't see you lick it. Just put <laughs> it down. Licked, and then she, <laughs> she licks the bread first. Yeah. And then, and then she licked it in front of me. She licked it. I was like, just can take the bread. Oh, so, uh, so, okay. That's interesting then. Because she, justice only applies when it's not her. <laughs> exactly. That's what we're finding out. That's, that's what I, that's, that's what I was getting she to. She practices selective Outrage. Yes. <laughs> and so, so, but, but it, 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 it's cool to like, Sean, as she's getting to an age where like, I'm getting to know who she is as like a person. And it's fun. I really love her, but it's fun because it's like, it's hard. This is a hard personality to yeah. deal with, you know? Yeah, 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 but yeah. dude, it was, it, oh, it was great. So and Benson funny, Boone dude. is awesome. Um, and, and all the kids now, every 21 year old guy I see, they're all wearing belly shirts. His shirt, Every the new cr- thing is now the shirt doesn't come past the waist. Like Philip Seymour Hoffman in uh, in Boogie Nights. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, yeah, Philip Seymour Hoffman and Benson Boone twins. And, but um, is it he was dead? In, he's dead. Right? He's dead. Yeah, unfortunately, heroin, the heroin, and um, and so, but it was an amazing concert. The Brooklyn Paramount. It was he. he was it pop? Yeah. Pop, like oh we can't play his songs right we'll get flat is it like uh yeah i, I know i probably i yeah, imagine what it is heard some so, some of his songs she, in commercials she understands it from uh, radio play commercials and radio play and yeah i think she just found it she actually just found it like on the youtube but what algorithm. made her take to him you know like there's plenty of music why did why did his songs resonate with a nine you know like what, what is it? i wonder what it is about he like getting what, how do you how, what defines her musical taste well she any? she you know she knows all the <laughs> words and then it was one of those things where it's like you know it's like I think I'm sure she probably thinks he's cute. I'm sure. Okay, sure, you know? sure, sure. So like I, I, I'm sure there's that. Um, and I think she just I don't know. Like, and we like well, his music too. His music's clean. It's about like yeah, hello. Um, <laughs> it's clean, you know. But but even she notices. Like she's like she loves his music, and he's like upbeat. But like you know, so, singers sing about breakups and all that stuff. And she was like, man, why is everybody so sad? <laughs> Everybody's just so sad. Well, she said adults. She was like, adults are always so sad. <laughs> oh, she, get, uh, she got that right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, rude awakening. But that's how you have better help. Use that promo code. Hey, babe. Exactly right. Um, Let me ask you a question. How many times, let's, let's start here. How many times a year would you say you shed a tear for whatever reason? Cried today in the car. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cried today in the car. And I, but, I cried but that too. number. Cried last that, night number probably is i would say i cry once a quarter 
Okay. So like four, a fiscal quarter. <laughs> yeah, once a quarter. Fiscal quarter. A yeah, fiscal okay. quarter, I would say I cry once every <laughs> once every I want to get say, the reports. Yes. <laughs> once every four months they sent my account sent it to me. <laughs> so I would say I, I I would say I'm good for about four cries a year. Four cries. Let's go around the, t- the horn here. Rice a roni? At least once or twice a week, I feel like. I, Do you cry <sighs> once or twice a week for real? Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. Does it come out of nowhere? It does. Uh, I was watching Bar Rescue and. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not even joking. I wish, I wish dude, that was a joke. Dude, I feel like we had to get to know each other better. Yeah. I, re- I, mean, I, I love you. I know you're the best. I really think you're the best. But unfortunately, we don't get to spend a lot of time outside of when we're doing this. Because right, he's busy right, crying. As of yeah. right now. Yeah. Because, But I really, I, I tell you right now, I cry a couple times a week. Yeah. I, just, I don't know what for. It, yeah. It, it, it could come up. Yeah. It definitely. I mean, undercover boss, forget it. But yeah. <laughs> sometimes it just hit you randomly. You're saying you feel your emotions every, every which way. Yeah. You can feel happiness as much as you can feel sad. Crying, by the way, it's a more modern thing for that to be associated with like negativity and I want to help you. This whole like I want to help everybody culture doesn't really help. Crying is a natural way to release some get energy yeah. and pro- get it out, which it, sh- it should be like, okay, if you see someone crying in public, like that's just a, a system. I, I also, I feel like I cry more because like with Barbara, like I, I like seeing good things. John happening. Taffer really turns. T- 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I just like seeing good things happen to good people. So that that yeah, that's good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trevor, so have you cried since you fell down doing a karate kick? <laughs> <laughs> I cry every day when I think about that. Uh, He's Trevor is like the Terminator. He has never shed a tear yet. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like you are pretty emotionless, Trevor. I, well, I think you're going to say emotional. I was like, thank you, but no. Yeah, so. yeah, you're pretty even keeled. Seems thank like you. you're reserved, uh, for better or worse. You know, like, yeah. do you feel? And I don't know if it's because in in this environment, like I don't know how you are when you're just you know with the fellas <laughs> like, <laughs> hanging out or, or you know whatever. But you, what would you say? Would you say how many times a year? Like full, like bawling. Like I definitely like if no, I see no, I shed a tear. No, oh, you okay. shed a tear. Uh, no, bawling. Bawling's a whole other level. We'll okay. get to bowling in a second. <laughs> shedding a tear, maybe like once a month, maybe okay. more, maybe. But like, okay. Like to you know, if I see something sad that happened to someone, or if I think. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Probably something sad. What would you bring that on? It's just something said the news. Not, <laughs> not, not too sad, but like I was at Trader Joe's a couple weeks ago. Sure. There's this older the prices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The low, low prices. The uh, this elderly lady like stopped me and she was like, "Can you go in the elevator with me?" She was like, "I got stuck on it last time I was here and no one was in and there." And you just with started me. weeping in front of her face. Yeah. And then she was like, <laughs> "I need to take you on the elevator with me." So I went on the elevator with her so she wouldn't be alone. But did you- I thought about that after? And I was like, gosh, that's so sad. Like, oh, and you cried after. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Shed a tear. Okay. At Aww. home later. That's nice. Yeah. It was very vulnerable of me. Wow. Yeah. Yes. It's vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I for for, for myself, I used You're to a cry. Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could break a board real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Get the boards up. I, I used to cry when like uh when when something was sad, like I saw something sad, uh still with the news, like I can't you can't turn on the news and not. But or it's just something emotional or happy. But nowadays, I find that under the surface, they're there because I'm in a stage of my life, and I, I don't wish anyone to get there, but babe, but but I am a little bit older than you. Right. And somewhere around, like, uh, like maybe I would call it uh, maybe three to three four years ago. Okay. I, you know, we've talked about this. I started having, like, a, what I would imagine is like a midlife thing. Sure. But very, getting very existential. I haven't shaken that yet. I, I like to think it's par for the course. But because of that, right under the surface here, things that can be happy turn to sad things to me now right away. So like what, what do I'll do is, and I'm trying to rework this, but what I'll do is I'll see something like happy and be like, oh, that's like, uh, that makes me so happy. And then I will get sad because, well, that won't always be like that. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? So you're so not like, accepting change, that the universe has changed. Change has always been tough for me, but now... At right. this stage of my life, where I'm at, where my family's at, a, now it's like it's it feels like a free fall. Now it never did. Now I feel, and I can only imagine that it. I mean, as you get older, how does it not get more, you know, strong that that feeling? I've been reading this book that's been really helpful for me, and the name the name of the book, the name. Wait, the actual name of this is the real name of the book, and it everybody is everybody poops. Everybody poops. <laughs> no, but it is where where is it? Hold on, mine. Mind Conf, was it Mind, mind Conf? No, yeah. the name of the book is Meditations for Men Who Do Too Much. That's the name of the book by Jonathan Lazier. Meditations for Men. Hey Siri, order me Meditations by Men That Do Too Much by John Lazier. What's his name? Meditations for Men Who Do Too Much. Here it is. 
it, and it, I, so I read a page of it a day. You know, each day you're, you're has big a, on a you're big on a page a day, I'm and I like on, that because uh, uh, for me, for me, it's you're one not of the, biting off more than you can chew. It's moderation, but you're still getting something. That's what I feel like. I, I feel like life's a marathon, not a sprinty winty. Yeah. So I feel like meditation's for men who do too much. I try to read a page a day, and then hopefully that leads to more reading because you know you get in the flow. Like sometimes I feel like as soon as you wake up, whatever it's you like do writing. in the first five ten minutes of whatever you do, I believe kind of imprint your mind for that day. So I try to read as immediately. I try to read a page as oh, soon as nice. I get up. Yeah. I try Good to read. Try. And so what what it is thing for meditations for men who do too much, you know, they said a couple of things that they said in that book are like um you know like we're overloading like your 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 plate is the key, the key to unhappiness. That is so so taking everything off your plate <laughs> Right, they said I that mean, the the fear because this idea. I feel like I'm at an all you can eat buffet over here. I know <laughs> because they said the idea that you're going to be it will happen for some people, but this idea that you're going to go bankrupt or be homeless, it's all made up. I'm just saying that when you read like like these ideas that all these like w the reason why we overload our, overload our plate yeah. is we're like generational wealth and you know i want to make sure that uh, you know well, i i could go bankrupt i got to make money all that all of it is in our head Mo because especially now in society most of it is like w if you just have your basic need you're be having your basic needs met is not enough yeah. right so you're looking for all these exterior I would love to be a, like a minimalist like a monk validations but, I can't. but but no but you can that's the thing it's you're choosing not to i don't know why just like i'm choosing not to yeah. i don't know why we are i haven't gone to that page in the book yet <laughs> but, <laughs> but it just it, reading that book helps me because it's like it's like there's this one quote that they have and then they go on to explain it like jacqueline kennedy onassis said after jfk died she was like you know jfk uh, died recently jfk died and um google that cool <laughs> and and she said something like uh today uh uh you know he is now a martyr but he I, i'm sorry he is now a legend but he only ever wanted to be a man so it's like this thing this idea especially in western culture of you got to be the best you got to the problem with being he says in the book the problem with being successful is you have to keep being successful which is not the way it's supposed to be at all uh, uh, this idea race. of being podcaster of the year in 2024 and then not being that in 2025 or whatever that is that is the problem. We've spoken about that too, because because in our industry too, like you you have ebbs and flows, and right. you could go this 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 is for as long as possible. Eventually, yeah, this has to happen, and even this, yeah. But it's just so hard to grasp when you've worked so hard and have a trajectory yeah. like that to understand that you have to, you know, you have to be aware and brace that and, and be able, even if you know it's coming, it's still hard. Yeah, and it's also too like even like being so connected, our brains haven't evolved to that yet so like you really you correct the, the same thing it's the same things they've been saying for a thousand years to keep your circle small to yeah, not we're, like we're saturated we're so over you're oversaturated in every part of your life <laughs> right so you have to make like these conscious choices to be like i'm not going to do that i'm going to take less money to get more time back to get more happiness and you have to you know it's difficult to do that but that it's like if you don't do it then you just continue going so down I the path. feel like i'm very that hits home for me very much yeah. do you feel right now with your position your workload whatever do you feel it's it's fine you're on your grind but it is this and it's this and you take it as it comes and you still have a lot of downtime or do you also feel that way that you feel like you should be cutting some stuff out when i now when yeah. i feel like i'm doing too much like i had a you know workload or you know like whatever like i got to do a lot i'll i'll i won't let it go as long as i used to i'm very comfortable now with the idea that maybe i won't be the best comedian to ever live right B but i have a family so i just want to be the best father and partner to right. them i right. don't the other stuff the accolades and then some people say well, that's just you you know uh, uh you know uh, that's a cop out because it's like you, you know you're not working as hard as your other peers no, it's like no, way, no it's not maybe i work to the point of burnout bro and i can't and it doesn't make you happy no so that so i'm looking for i'm rather than looking for rather than looking for success yeah and all that i'm looking for fulfillment now it's just a fulfilling thing to me absolutely but i'm just saying so do you feel though that you are in that camp of like i have too much on my plate i have to cut something out are you there yet or do you feel like it can get there 
it's building. Obviously, with more success comes more opportunity, comes more responsibility. I, I do feel like I'm with great, more there. With, I mean, I've been off the road now. With great for, response. What is it? With, with great, great risk. With great power comes great responsibility. With great power. With great power. Comes great respect. Respect. Which means and money, power, respect. Key to life. Key to life. P. Diddy. No, not P. Diddy. Mace. Is it Mace? Mon it's that's the uh, uh, no my, uh, no. It's a collective. Is it the flip mode Bad squad? Boy? No, Flip Flip Squad. No, no. Money, Terror power. Squad. Terror Squad. It might be Terror. It's Lil Kim. Money, Power, Respect. Can you look that up for me? See, here's the thing. First, you get the money. Then, after you, then you get the power. You get the power. Then you get the yeah. life. Um, Keep it alive. Um, uh, I, I think I'm, I've been working to try to cut stuff out of my life, but I'm at a, this weird thing where it's like a Jenga. And I feel if I. Jenga. I, I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I'm stuck. Like I'm like, I'm too deep in this. And if I, I, I can't just disconnect on some stuff. So. That's something I've been but I think, for quite I think, some time. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, uh, I don't have the answers. I, I just, I just know that we'll try. I, I'm all right. I'm, let me give it a shot. Homeless people, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> clip no, it. Clip it. <laughs> um, no, I, I feel though that this idea, like this, it's a trap. Like this game of success, it's a big trap. Like you know, it, but it's the things that we've heard a lot. You know, like yeah. about the, it's, it's a trap to. You know, kind of let the like I was telling uh, uh, Rice Aroni and Karate before you got here that I saw this listening to the, I was listening to this podcast and they were saying that they took a hundred people and they took their cell phones away and just gave and they them asked a hundred people. Yep, we served a hundred people and what would they ask? What smart? They took their cell phones away and gave them the smart smart. Uh, they took their smartphones away and gave them flip phones. Flip modes, they gave Mars Shafir phones. Okay. And they and no matter what happened in those people's lives, finance went down. As long as they didn't have a traumatic like death, if their finances went down, if their job changed, whatever happened at the end of the calendar year, all their happiness went up. Everybody's happiness went up because they got less connected in virtual reality and they got more connected in the physical space. Here and here. So the chart is the more they around the more they found out exactly yeah that's exactly that was the name of the study so funny. <laughs> but it, but it, but it's like it's all the thing is when you read books like meditations for men who do too much you know st st any of this it's they're all always saying the same it's just the same thing it's just stay in the present this show is sponsored by BetterHelp, guys therapy can help you find what matters most to you so you can do more of it a lot of times we do not take time down to just Take inventory of what's going on in our lives, what might be missing, and what we need. I am a firm believer of making that time for yourself. I think it's really important. I don't think you know that you need it until you do it. The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you. Uh, and BetterHelp can help you do that. Uh, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give it a try. Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. <laughs> Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash HeyBabe today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash HeyBabe. Butcher Box guys get incredible deals on premium cuts from Butcher Box. Deals this good are hard to come by at the grocery store. I sing its praises. I have Butcher Box loaded up in my freezer right now. Uh, I have used it since I got my first trial run from them and they started advertising on this podcast. Uh, the reasons I like it. Peace of mind. High quality meat and seafood you can absolutely trust. You don't have to worry about if you know how to pick stuff out at the grocery. You don't have to go to the grocer, which saves you time and time is money. 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork raised crate-free, wild-caught seafood, all the hits. Humanely raised, there's never antibiotics, no hormones added. Uh, delivered to your door. Delivery is always free. Can't beat that. You can customize your box or choose from ones that they have uh, already. And the value is it's cheaper than going to the store. Um, exclusive member deals, recipe inspiration, guides, tips, hacks, all that stuff. Check it out. Today, ButcherBox is giving our listeners a special offer. Use my link, butcherbox.com slash heybabe, and use code heybabe to get $20 off your first order. That's butcherbox.com slash heybabe, and use the code heybabe. Tell me how many missed calls I have. You have 110 missed calls. How many unanswered texts do I have? 233 texts. I can't do it. But you, but, but you, here's the thing though, babe, you've done it. it, it it's, it's self-induced. Nobody, you're choosing this. So don't, well, I'm not answering. I mean, well, I can't saying, get to it. No, 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 no. I know. But I'm just saying like we, a lot of times we've put ourselves in these prisons. None of this is, 
I don't want to say none of this is real. Of course, it's real. You just got another one. <laughs> <laughs> not none of it, but it's like, this is all a choice. Yeah. So sometimes we make these choices and then you're like not happy yeah. with it, but we're all self-inducing it. Well, Nobody's never, telling us to do this. I, I, well, I, I have in the last year and like three months, I have not been under like 170 texts. I refuse. I can't. I just can't do it. I just, it just, but that's, that also makes me feel <laughs> anxious. That's what I'm saying. So what, so, so maybe it's changing yourself, your number. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. And that's you know, the thing this is I don't on the know. mind because this, 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 this kind of, uh, this theme comes up with us a lot. I mean, right. it's probably coming from me, but, but let me ask you, what, so what type of meta, uh, who sings it? The locks, bro. The locks. I lo the, dude, the, Jada Ma is one of the best rappers of all time. J Jada, yeah, Jada Kiss. Kiss, for sure. J so that was Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats? Who was yeah. that? Swiss Beats um, was the producer, right? He's the producer of, of all oh, this I stuff. It was Did Diddly. Diddly. Yeah, he uh, was on Bad Boy. Little in the middle, a little, 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 little. Did we know we did too middle, little? I didn't know Diddly. Uh, is that how it goes? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's in that area, but yeah. I, I don't. I never knew the words. I, um, by the way, I, I went to the gym before, and I planned to take a shower uh, here at at the studio, and then I didn't take a shower. That's what that is. Yes, and I'm just I'm just a bag of filth sitting on these mustard chairs. Oh, but, but at least I'm not rubbing my open ass on it like Ari Shafir did. Ari Shafir, <laughs> shout him out. Um, we had to get this professionally clean. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, you should make use of it. That would have made me happy. That we're like, oh, we, well, we actually use the shower in the studio. I know. I know. I usually shower here. Usually. Yeah. Oh, you I do? Uh, usually I do. No, I never yeah. have. <laughs> you, usually I work out. I work out. A shout out Badass Academy today, babe. The workout today. Here also too. When you're mentally, you know, when you're depressed, obviously we know the workout. It doesn't even have to be a good you workout. Me, Just buddy. get in there. The workout. The workout today was. Uh, I mean, so hard that. But about thirty minutes in. I was like feeling like my depression, like just going down, 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 and then it motivates you to keep to just like keep going. And I'm 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 less uh I'm less um obsessed with my results now in mm. any part of my life. That's mm. one fundamental change that has definitely changed for me in the last year is I don't care much about the results as much as I care about my effort, what I'm putting into it. That's what I can So like I know like if a tickets aren't selling somewhere, it used to just be like if it's not sold out I'm a failure. Where now oh. it's if I'm posting about it, if I'm trying to tell people do. come out to see me in the UK if they if I'm doing my right. part which I feel like I am podcasting or whatever then I I can't I don't care about the rest of it right. come or don't come as I long want as you I say guys May 5th we're at Radio City Music Hall April 21st Chicago Theater if I say that enough yes that's all I could do what else can you do what else can you do so I'm but I feel like we're in a very results based culture but you got to just take yourself out of it at some point yeah. you know that's why I think you know you know, if you have a family, it's good. If you don't have a family, then you find something outside of your work. You can't let your job define you. That's why all the Japanese kill themselves. <laughs> so, it's, true. It's, it's true, right? You yeah, know that, yeah, right? Because all they, this they, is the choice the Japanese kill themselves. Yeah. What do you want us to do? May 5th, yes. Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> April 21st, Chicago Theater. And if yeah. you're in the UK we, or Amsterdam, we just added the Netherlands. You added. I added Amsterdam. June second. Dutch. Dutch. Never been there. You've been to Amsterdam? I have. Amsterdam. I have been to Amsterdam. You know what's funny? I w walked around to look for the red light district, but couldn't find it. <laughs> really? And people were like, it's over there. And like, I didn't see I didn't see anything anyone talks about. I didn't see any like har harlots. What are they called? Harlots? harlots? What about the canals? Charlatans. I didn't see anybody in a window. Charlatan the God. With a red light, <laughs> red light on, selling bodies. Can you walk anywhere in it? Can you somehow go to Amsterdam and not walk into the canals? Or the canals are everywhere. <laughs> As far as well, uh, are the canals everywhere, or is it just one part there's of Amsterdam a, that has a the canals? There's a huge section of canals, but I, I don't think the canals are everywhere. But when they're, when they're there, <laughs> you they're know. There. How long were you in Amsterdam? Four nights. Four four nights, five days. Yeah, three nights, four days, or four three nights, days, four five, nights, four nights, five days. I got a great hotel. What is it? Uh, I'll get the name. I forget. I swear, I stayed. It now it's small. But it's boutique, but it's lovely. Did you do shows, or were you just there on? I vacation? was there preemptively four days before a European, a UK tour. Right. So I went there, and then I hopped over to the UK, and then I did the tour for three weeks. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing Amsterdam, and then we go to like Belfast and London yes. and Manchester, Amsterdam. That's what I did. Birmingham. I was in October 2000. Mm, mm, October 2018. Okay, something like that. October it was cold though. Really? And I'm, I'm going in June, so it should be warm. Maybe it wasn't that time. I don't know. 
But I, I have I have um, some places for you to go, places to to check out. Okay, yeah, I'm only gonna I'm gonna be there for two days. <clears throat> I, well, you could get some stuff done there too. It's it's a it's a biking city, you know that, right? So what do you mean, like like ninety percent of the population rides bicycles? Really? So there's very few cars. There's bicycles on every single block, like parked. There's if you walk the streets, you will pass thousands of bicycles. Really? Yeah. That's kind of cool, though. It's pretty charming. Did you did you do that ride bikes? I did. I got we rode boat bikes one day, but I did go on the the boat on the a tour of the canals on a boat. You should. That's do that. fun. You, you should have do to that. do that. I was there. No, it wasn't. I. I was December. I was there during Christmas. That's what it was. I, maybe I was there after after. The, I was there during Christmas, but all they had um all lights up, so they had the canal like went and went and all like it was like going. You know how we done Staten on Staten Island, Brooklyn? Like I don't know if anyone else did this when we were younger, but we would drive around to look at Christmas lights on yes. blocks. Yeah, you know, like our parents would take us and yeah. like, look at those lights, and you just kind of like surf like you'd be like that 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 block has a lot of lights right yeah you do that in the canal you go and there's things they light up buildings as like a light show and you take the canal and you go through it was like because i'm big on christmas right. and if you know anything about me you know that i know that you're big on christmas and that you're big on christmas you're big on comfortable shoes you're big on buying the right pillow you know me very well yeah uh you're big on factor meals use that promo true. code hey babe that's right that's exactly right it's one of skinny mini hey babe's 50 What's that? Hey, babe, fifty for hey, babe, five. Oh, hey, babe, fifty. That's <laughs> it. Oh, they're up in it. They're up in it. <laughs> um, yeah. See, see, check that out. That's just a picture of a, of like a, a street. <laughs> yeah. Amsterdam. It's like yeah. two thousand bikes on it. And then, and then, uh, well, when this comes out, I'm in. Du I'm coming home from Dubai. I'm actually in the air right now. I'm in the plane on my way home from Dubai. But I'm okay. still some, an AI version of sitting. And you never been, right? Never been. Dubai Opera House show was great. <gasps> wow, the Dubai. This sounds so fancy. The Dubai, Dubai Opera, Opera House. House. Yeah, and they do Dubai. 13 hour flight, but direct. Okay. I thought, how about this? Thank God I checked. I was convinced as convinced can be that my flight left Sunday at 11 p.m. and we were getting there Monday at 7 p.m. Dubai time. And the flight actually was leaving Sunday at 11 a.m. and we were getting there Monday at 7 a.m. Dubai time. And I was sure as shit that it was leaving at night. And, and I you found I, it out though. I found it out because military time screws with your boy. Okay. You use military time. Well, they do. The Dubai op this is the Dubai Opera House. It looks uh, like a, a this looks like the Sydney. I mean, that is look at that. Gorgeous. That is stunning. I have no And I've only ever said that word one other time. And when was it? Describing Cindy Crawford, 1989. Yes. Uh I love a woman with a nice mole. Yeah. She's got the mole to end all moles. She yeah. she after she did moles, moles were retired after her. That's it. Except for the CIA. But <laughs> what is the capacity here? I don't know. And I got to be honest with you. They have not shared any information <laughs> about ticket sales at all. It's almost like I feel like I got fake booked and it's not even real. Okay. You um, because I don't, everyone else, 2000s. That I, looks I, like it's, I mean, because it looks like it's 18,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I, I don't know that I have a single fan in Dubai. Yeah. So is it the expat? What's over there? I, well, it's a, the Dubai Comedy Festival is is what is is what I'm a part but are of. Are you on with Dubaian comedians? Dubanesies? I, I don't I don't know. Are you, are you going over there to take part with the Dubanes? With the Dubanes. Yeah. And and um I I don't know uh who else is on it, who's a part of it, if there's any other Americans out. I'm doing one uh, show. Oh, Gad Elmale is there. He's okay, a he's a big he's deal. Not, he, but he's, he's a huge but deal. He's but he's he's from there. I mean he's uh, he's not from here. Yeah, and I'm sure he's, you know, I'm yeah. There you go. There I Tax am. Tax day. Mo Gilligan, I think, is one of the biggest comics in the UK. Oh, I love the Zion. Um, uh, yes. Zarna Garg, we know her. We know hers. Oh, yeah, just saw her. So th these are all the, so I guess it's a relatively long festival. Did you do a, like, do you feel like, uh, they they speak, obviously they're speaking English. English, yeah. English. So you, do you think you're, did you do a check on your references? Do you, might you have to tweak anything? I was just told, do not mention anything about, uh, you know, like Islam or, or make fun of Muhammad or any jokes like that. Oh, yeah, and don't, don't do any that. gay stuff. Yeah. And you're good. You mean like don't perform, like don't actually <laughs> take part in any gay stuff? <laughs> yeah. That's what I clarify. <laughs> how are you going to do that now? They're asking too much. That's what I clarified with my agent. So what do they, what is <laughs> Don't do gay stuff. Like even in my own hotel. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> and they said, uh, so, so, but as of now, you know, I really don't know. I mean, it looks like I am the only straight white male who's on this lineup. Yeah. 
So <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't know you and I saw that, you look like such a character. Oh, you are a character, honestly. <laughs> but but it, it's it, an it, insane it, it picture for them it, to choose. It doesn't project who it does. It does because I know you. But like, it also gives. It gives something that is yeah. more than what you are. Like I would think you're someone different than who you are. Yeah. If I saw that, I didn't. I didn't know you. I didn't. You know, like I just saw that picture when they posted on the side. I was like, I didn't approve this isn't one. It, isn't it funny how they just take when we do shows? They just take photos from wherever. Yeah, like, like I, I, think, I saw like there's been photos of me from major shows that have been taken from friends' cell phone cameras <laughs> from like I'm not kidding, 2014. Yeah, I'm not even joking. It's like two pixels. It's like I have my ha my hair is buzzed. It's like where the hell? Why would you right click on that? Um, <laughs> isn't it wild as comedians in this day and age that we? Places like opera houses. Yes, yeah. these things were built. Some of them, the hundreds of years ago, for people at the highest level. Yeah. of of a God given talent. Yeah, and and comedy is such these days. Thanks to all of you guys that that we are playing these things, and it's like a, like a good amount of people. Play. It's like it's wow. Here's what I want you to do because I, I took a peek at this, and if you're not if you're home, Google the, the uh, Debonair's Opera House. But would it be possible? And I don't want to put you out. Okay. Would it be possible, perhaps, you arrive what day? I arrive Monday. The? The, I think that's the 15th. That's the night you perform. Then I perform on the 16th. Not according to that. What does that say? <laughs> 18th. No, that's at the oh, 15th. Oh, when wait, when for, am I performing? Uh, I'm on oh, the 16th. 16th. Oh, so my, that's my bad. That's my bad. Okay. Is it possible for you to wear a tux with tails <laughs> yeah. for that show? Yeah, like maybe we can just go to you know rent to rent a tux right now. They, it comes in a little like brown suitcase. I've done it for weddings yeah. and stuff, you know. And get one with like tails, you know, because yeah. like, <laughs> I'm in an opera house. Yeah, like 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 Daffy Duck, you know. Yeah, and don't address it. Just don't go address up. it. Maybe a pinstripe pan with a, <laughs> with, with a thing with tails, you know. What I mean? Maybe white gloves even. Yeah, yeah. And, and just go do my regular act. Just do it. Like go yeah. full, full do it and guy. post it. Post it. And honestly, if you post stills, people will not know if you're an opera singer or a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they have to. I mean, it's Dubai. It's the, they have the most money. They have yeah. to have. A, a, they probably a, have one in the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm going to text my people. I would love that it. I'm connected with, with Dubai yeah. and say, is there a way to get me for the show a tuxedo with a tail and white gloves? Give them my sizes yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Okay. So look, if you do it, if you do it, I'll do it at Radio City. Even if, <laughs> even if the guys don't, <laughs> you all just I'll do, do it. it. If you do it, I'll do it. Okay, okay, fair. But I won't say anything. No, I'll go out on stage, and that's the end of that. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Tail, white gloves. Yeah, we'll look it up, right? Like, look, look it up. We'll, we'll try to do it. Yeah. If you do it, <laughs> you all do you're, it. You're setting you're setting the table for me because it's it, up to me. I promise you, if you do it, I will do I it. Will do it. <laughs> yeah, put in tuxedo with dual tails. tuxedo with tail. Do you do it top bad? No, that's too much. I don't know if they'll find that disrespectful. <laughs> Why? If I put a turban on? <laughs> <laughs> I <think> just... <laughs> what did you say? If you do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I said a top bad. A top bad. I thought you said a turban. <laughs> I thought you. I thought you were saying turban no, in a funny way. If you put way. on a turban hat, it's it's combo. Um, could you imagine? I just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm doing it. And then you said, I know I'm in prison. Can you imagine? I didn't clarify, and you're like, I know, be disrespectful. And then you just did it because you thought that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine you on stage at the Dubonnet's <laughs> Opera House in a tuxedo with tails and a turban in the Dubai Opera House, and I'm bombing <laughs> so uh, but not a, not this is this is like this a is party a city yeah, no yeah. not party city man i'm talking you're gonna like the way you look yeah like a real i can guarantee it. i i think that maybe the top hat if you wear a top hat you're wearing the gloves cane and shiny shoes <laughs> yeah. but, I, but I, then i feel like they will think that it might a, i want people to maybe be like oh he dressed up yeah yeah not like oh what he's having fun with a goof like, right let them think that you went there and you respect the venue. <laughs> yes. And you respect them. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's the uh, the white gloves Damn. are I like the, the white tux jacket with the tails is pretty <laughs> And and at one point, at one point in the show, okay, we, all right, we're doing this. At one point in the show, I, I want you to go to the stool, even though you probably never sit, and and I want you to do this. I want you to go to the stool. <laughs> 
<laughs> like a concert pianist. Yeah. I want you to just throw the tails back and sit in the stool. Honestly. Like you were about to crack your knuckles and play a concerto. I think I'm going to do it. Because I've been nervous about going to Dubai and being like, I don't know that I want to go. I kind of just don't want to go all the way over there. I want to just be home. But now it's kind of giving me this bit is kind of giving me like, well, this is why I'm going. Yeah. This this is why I'm going to Dubai. I mean, it would be so much fun for you, me, our listener. It's just fun. There's nothing about it that's not fun. Right. All you have to do is commit to getting the talk. <laughs> Get the bit. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, and I I'm, I swear, I know sometimes, seen on the Patreon, I know sometimes we make promises, but no, I'm <laughs> telling you, if you do it, I'll do it. Okay. Fine. Fair. Okay. Fine. I, uh, I think I'm going to do it because, <laughs> because I think I'm going to get the tux. I'm going to find out if I, if they have a place there, I'm going to get the tux there. Shiny I, shoes and shit. Don't I, like, don't like throw on like Jordans and no, but, but, make but, it like you can, and I can rent it. You just rent it right, for that event. Right, you rent it. Rent it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I'm not asking you to make a full merino wool purchase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How, All right. How much time are we at, Steve? Uh, 44. 44. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, 44 zips. Zip, 40, 44 zip. What is that again? <laughs> oh, from uh, Impactful Jokers. <laughs> no. What is 44 zip? Zip? First game of my JV basketball That's league right. in CYO. We lost 44 to nothing. <laughs> right. Right. You told me that in Hey Baby. Yes. Right. Um, which the show we're on right now. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. OJ Simpson died. Died today. I know it's a week later, but he died today. Is it weird that when my friend texted me it, my first instinct, I went, oh. Yeah. I guess, is that weird? No, it's a human no, being that well, died, right? I think I mean, what's like, weird is I have a friend who posted on his Instagram story a picture of him with OJ, and he wrote RIP to the juice. <laughs> but it was a picture with him and OJ, which I was like, okay, that's weird, I guess. But I think that. And then my other friend was like, oh, his last words were, I did it. I'm like, no, they're not. Um, but imagine they are. We get it. You have friends. We get it, friends. But uh, I, I thought that, I mean, he was supposedly like dying for like years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like, like it wasn't like came out of left field. Okay. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Yeah. Came out of left field. Yeah. So uh, is it weird though? Weird that like you like, were I, have no, I have no affinity to him. I, I'm not a particularly a fan of his before this all happened. I, I kind of liked him in uh Naked Gun. But like my father won't rent from Hertz because of OJ. <laughs> <laughs> Hertz. They named it after what he did. But anyway. True. Um, like, nice. No, but but I, I I did go I like my, I texted my friend, is this real? Like, yeah. I, went, I went like, oh okay, you never want to see someone die, but then I was like all right, I'm a human being, but I know he's. I know he did. Also, could you imagine he didn't? I mean, he did it. But can you imagine he didn't do it? Right. And this whole time that sucks. Yeah, we're like. I mean, by court of law, he did not. Right. He did not. I mean, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Ci- I mean, civilly, and what we believe is is you'll, you'll never convince people otherwise. But could you imagine? You know, what? I think he would be distraught and destroyed if he didn't do it, and. I think he just had to make do with public opinion on him because he got a, away with it. And after that, psh, who the f- cares what anyone thinks? You could have lost, I mean, your whole life. Could, you know, so he must be just be like, whatever. I'm at, got an out of jail free card. Yep. And, and I don't care what anyone thinks. I'm uh, free. I'm free. Could you imagine too, like, because all I saw like a lot of memes or whatever, like, you know, he went right to hell. Could you imagine like when you die, you go to heaven and OJ is right there. He's like, you motherfuckers it thought be, I did it. It would be awkward. I knew I didn't do it. That's why I'm sitting up here. Yeah, that would be awkward. And then then I would probably, I would have egg on my face yes. as far as OJ is concerned in my beliefs. Yeah, yeah. But how do you, and we might have talked about this, but then did he write a book? Supposedly. He, he wrote a book. Supposedly <laughs> confessing. No, no. I thought he, right? wrote, I thought he wrote a book that if I did it, if I did it, this right. is how I would have done it. Exactly. Now I don't know if that's a misleading title, but how did the world not stop turning the day he dropped <laughs> that book? He he's basically dangling in our face, right? Like every he knows everyone thinks that he did it, right? He knows he got off, right? This the elephantitis of his sack, right? To then write a book that says, "Well, if I did murder this woman that right. I got off of that, you think I?" This is how it murder. Now I don't know in between the in the between the pages if, if, if it's just a misleading title. I didn't read it, but I know that did is that did he write that book or are you just making that up? No, he did. No, I mean, yeah, that's he story. probably didn't this write is, it. Oh, if I did it, Confessions yeah. of the Killer. Now, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, 
Can, he, can we can we read the can we read just like some a summary on that? People saying that maybe that if you read this book, it's proving that he didn't do it. Oh, it was like a it was like a a hook yeah, but, and bait and switch. Yeah, but but can can we introduction by the Goldman family? Yeah, so maybe it's the Goldman family who also their son died. Maybe they wait, did they write it and wait, OJ is this didn't. A do? Book by OJ. It said uh, the authors uh, uh, by OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson, Kim Goldman. Wait, so the Goldman family would have never written a book about it. Written What's the synopsis? Go synopsis of the OJ book. Hit me with a synopsis. Yeah, uh, love a synopsis. I just got a call from Tank Sinatra. It's the only Tank I know. And the only Sinatra. Yeah. The book is hypothetical. As a hypothetical tell-all, an account of how O.J. Simpson would have murdered his estranged wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her acquaintance, Ron Goldman, had he been the true killer, although even post-publication, he may so it is what we thought it was? It's weird, but why would the Goldmans be involved with it? I don't understand. I need more on this. I need more on this. Give me more. No, tell me Just more. Tell, tell me, me more. more. This is a book review. Can you back out of that? Click on the next thing. What does O.J. Simpson's book, If I Did It, say? The first part of If I Did It is manuscript contains a detailed description of the Simpsons' early relationship and marriage. The latter part describes details of the events on June 12th and about the murders as they could have occurred if he committed them. Dude, that is a money grab and a half. That's bold. I don't dude. like that. That is, that's wild. I don't like that at all. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand. Like, did this, did, was this... Massive when this happened? Am I, I think it was a big book. What yeah. year was it? Two thousand seven. Who put that out? How could you? Buford Books. Two thousand seven. and he then he describes how he would have. Yeah, done. If if I did do it, I don't know. I, I things aren't my I, something's not connecting in my head. What am I missing here? I don't know. I I I I. I Hey, they they directly they offered him six hundred grand cash to 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 never dispute that he wrote the book. Everyone thinks I'm a murderer anyway. They're not going to change their mind just because of a book. Okay, okay. Pablo Fenves, a screenwriter and witness. Hold on, uh, there. Uh, scroll down, uh, Stevie. It's, uh, down the other way. Uh, a, a, a screenwriter and a witness at Simpsons ninety five trial. R Ghost wrote the book. He stated in interviews that Simpson actively collaborated on the manuscript and that he, this guy, Pablo, knew Simpson was a murderer. Norman Pardo, Simpson's former manager, told HuffPo mm -hmm. that the book was written by a ghostwriter and without Simpson's involvement. Rather, Simpson had accepted, against Pardo's advice, 600000 from publisher Reagan Books and his parents to say he had written the book and to conduct an associated television interview on Fox. Uh, he, Simpson had rationalized, hey, they directly offered me 600000 not to dispute that I wrote the book. He said, that's cash. I said, they're <laughs> going to think you wrote it. He said, so everybody thinks I'm a murderer anyway. They're not going to change their mind just because of a book. So he was like, let me just take that cash. Take that, take that. Take, take, take that, take it, take it. And this take guy, it. the ghostwriter, says the book is based on extensive discussions with Simpson. Simpson's eldest daughter, Arnell, testified in a deposition that she and Van Exel, Van Exel, who I think? Like Nick Van Exel, yeah. the basketball player? Uh, he was amazing. President of Raffles Entertainment and Music Production came up with the idea for the book and pitched it to her father in an attempt to make money. She testified her father thought about it and eventually agreed to the book deal. Simpson stated, I have nothing to confess. This was an opportunity for my kids to get their financial legacy. My kids understand. I made it clear that it's blood money, but it's no different than any other writers who did books on this case. All right. Well, it is a little different. Yeah. You're describing how you would murder her if you had done it. But oh, that's weird. His daughter pitched him the idea. It's very strange. It's very, very strange. But do you think OJ, go around the room, did he do it? Did he not do it? I'd love to talk to somebody who thinks he didn't do it. Uh, I know someone who thinks he didn't do it. Genuine? And genuinely, who said he knows for a fact. I won't say his name on the air, just in case he's, you know, because it's just like talk at the back of the comedy seller table. Okay. Who said... It's a comic I know? It's a comic you know, mm -hmm. who dead serious was like, he goes, I know he didn't do it because I know the people who did do it. And this is like a respectable guy. And he was like, you know, it's, it's, it's it was dudes like real, you know, like no, uh, uh, like, you know, gang dudes from Denver. For, but for what reason? Because, um, 
I don't know the actual that reason. He hired them, or or they were they were going to kill him or something like that. They thought he was maybe there. And he was like, he knows that. And the, he knows this. Or that, or, I'm sorry, or that OJ orchestrated it, but didn't actually do it. That he hired guys from Denver to do it, but, and so he was Shout involved. Out Shout out Denver. But he didn't, he actually never even stepped foot in there. Okay. And that's how he could say, I, I wasn't there. And this is someone we know. Someone I we know. I need to know who that is ASAP. So this has been Hey Babe. That's right.